In this lesson, we're gonna explore the functionality and usage of Azure Key Vault. Now, very often, we're gonna have some application that needs a secret. It needs maybe a password, maybe it needs some kind of shared access signature or token to access some other service. Maybe I need to go and access some database, something else. And we don't want to put those secrets within our application code. It's going to get leaked, it's not secure. I might need keys. I might need to store a private key and perform cryptographic operations. Maybe I have a whole set of web servers and I'm using certificates. So I need to think about how do I distribute those certificates? How do I manage the lifecycle like renew them? So Azure Key Vault, is a service in Azure that is designed for exactly this. It supports three different types of entity. So we have a secret. So a secret is something that I can both read and write, i.e. it could be a password. It could be some uh, shared access signature, but I can add that secret to the key vault, and I can read it back out. Then there's the idea of keys. Now with a key, I can generate it, I can import it, so I could bring in an existing, I can perform cryptographic actions within the key vault, but I cannot export it, I cannot get it out. It lives within that key vault, and then I have to use it via the key vault. Then there's the idea of certificates. This is really all about kind of the life cycle management of those certificates and also the distribution of them. Now for some of these entities, I have the option of actually running this Azure Key Vault and the storage and usage on top of HSMs. So HSMs are actual hardware security modules designed for the storage and safekeeping of these types of entity that I want to protect. So you have these three different types. In terms of interacting with the key vault, you obviously, it's an Azure resource. So I have to authenticate to it, and then I can be given permission to these. Now currently there's two different types of authorization in Azure key vault. If we jump over and look at a key vault, what we can actually see is we have the old style. So the old style is when I look at my security, we have an access policy. And so an access policy is really just about the idea I can add a certain user and I can specify what permissions they get, but it's for each of the three types, but it's not granular. I don't have the ability to say, well, I get this permission to read a specific secret. So I have the option of access policy, but it's not granular. It would be for everything of that type within the vault. So in that model, if I wanted people to only have access to certain secrets, I'd have to put them in a different vault to give them that set of permissions. Or I can use role-based access control. So in role-based access control, that is granular. So I can think about, hey, I get a great granularity that I could have lots of secret or keys or certificates in a single vault and give different people access to different secrets, to different keys, to different certificates and perform different actions. Whereas access policy, it's really no granularity. It's just, hey, everything within the vault of a certain type. So generally we're gonna prefer that role-based access control option. And we can see that. So if I jump over to my other key vault, here, if I look at my access policy, I've selected to use Azure role-based access control. So I'm not configuring any permissions here. I use the regular access control and I do role assignments. And within here, I can see things like, well, there's a key vault administrator, but then I actually have different permissions on the actual different entities themselves. So at the key vault level, well, I can't really see very much because what I've done is I have different secrets. And at an individual secret level, so if I select secret one, 
It has its own access control. And here we can see on this particular secret, hey, Clark Kent was given the Key Vault reader role. And I can also see for a Key Vault secrets user, hey, Bruce Wayne actually has the ability to use the secrets. So this particular secret, Bruce Wayne can use, but not Clark Kent. Clark Kent just has regular Key Vault reader at the kind of the Azure resource manager level, but doesn't have access to the secret itself. If I looked at my other secret, secret two, looked at its access control, well then we'll see, hey, this time, Key Vault secrets user is Clark Kent. So Clark Kent can read this secret and not Bruce Wayne. So we get this really nice granularity that we can do. Now, one thing that's actually super common is obviously I have to authenticate to the Key Vault in the first place. So I have a chicken and egg problem. I can't store the password in the Key Vault that the app's gonna use to authenticate to the Key Vault. So a very common combination of technologies is if this was running in Azure, there's something called managed identity. So managed identity is an identity that is tied to a particular instance of a compute resource. And then what I could actually do as part of this RBAC, for example, or the policy, I could give the apps managed identity, which is built in. It's just available as a token it can leverage. I would give that identity, so app one's managed identity, some of these permissions So it's authenticating with its built-in managed identity, and then it gets permission to whatever its identity was given access to. So that's really the idea. Note Azure Key Vault is also used by a lot of Azure functionality. A lot of services will let you bring your own key, for example, to encrypt a storage account um, for a database encryption. When you bring your own key, what it's actually doing is it's that key is in your key vault, so you have management of the key. You can pick when to rotate it, when to revoke it. So if you do bring your own key, what's actually happening is it's gonna use Azure Key Vault for that. So hey, if I have the need for secrets or keys or certificate management in Azure, I'm gonna use Azure Key Vault.